Welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing the mechanism of action of misoprostol. Misoprostol belongs to a group of medications known as synthetic prostaglandin E1 analogues. And a synthetic prostaglandin E1 analogue is a class of drug which binds to a prostaglandin receptor and mimics the effect that a natural prostaglandin would have. Because misoprostol activates its target receptor, it's a prostaglandin E1 receptor agonist. Misoprostol is used to protect and promote healing of gastric and duodenal ulcers, as well as a potent uterine stimulant. So let's now look at the mechanism of action of misoprostol. So, as we mentioned, Misoprostol is a synthetic prostaglandin analogue, so it's important that we understand the role of prostaglandins. In particular, we're going to focus on the role of prostaglandin E1. Prostaglandins are produced at a cellular level by the breakdown of phospholipids that form part of the phospholipid bilayer, otherwise known as the cell membrane. The enzyme phospholipase A2, phospho relating to phosphate and lipe relating to lipids, and A's to mean the breakdown of, will break down the phospholipid bilayer and create arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid will then take one of two pathways. If the enzyme lipooxygenase acts upon arachidonic acid, it will convert it into leukotrienes and leukotrienes are responsible for inflammatory effects such as bronchospasm, chemotaxis and increased capillary permeability. If arachidonic acid is acted upon by the cyclooxygenase enzyme, it will be converted into prostaglandins. And prostaglandins play an important role in the regulation of gastric acidity, platelet aggregation, and renal blood flow. In particular, prostaglandin E1 plays an important role in the regulation of gastric acidity. Within the stomach, there are specialised cells called parietal cells, and these cells are responsible for secreting hydrogen and chloride ions, which form to make hydrochloric acid within the stomach. The acidity of the stomach acid plays an important role in the activation of enzymes and the digestion of food. However, if there is an excessive amount of hydrogen ions being pumped into the stomach, it can cause damage to the stomach mucosa and lead to ulceration. Prostaglandin E1 binds to its target receptor on the parietal cells and initiates a G-protein inhibitory pathway. This reduces hydrogen ion secretion by the parietal cells and therefore regulates stomach acidity, preventing the pH from becoming too low and causing harm to the stomach lining. Misoprostol is a synthetic prostaglandin E1, so will mimic the effect that natural prostaglandin E1 has on the parietal cells causing a reduction in hydrogen ion secretion and therefore reducing the acidity of the stomach contents. Because of this, misoprostol is used in the treatment and prevention of peptic and duodenal ulcers, especially those that are caused by the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin and ibuprofen. This is because non-steroidal anti-inflammatories inhibit the cyclooxygenase pathway, which means there is a reduction in the natural prostaglandins which regulate stomach acidity. Misoprostol will bind to prostaglandin E1 receptors on the parietal cells and will activate the G-protein inhibitory pathway. This will inhibit the production of cyclic adenosine monophosphate within the parietal cell, 
which will then cause reduced action in hydrogen ion secretion, making the stomach less acidic. As we mentioned, stomach acid has a low pH because it is responsible for the digestion of food and the activation of certain enzymes. But in normal health, this acidity does not cause harm to the endothelial cells which line the stomach wall. This is due to the mucosal barrier which lines the epithelial cells and consists of a thick mucus with high concentrations of bicarbonate. Misoprostol not only prevents the excretion of hydrogen ions, but it will also increase the amount of mucus and bicarbonate which forms the protective barrier. Prostaglandin E1 receptors are also found within the myometrium of the uterus, which is the muscular layer and is located between the endometrium and the perimetrium. When prostaglandin E1 binds to its target receptors on the muscle cells within the myometrium, it initiates the GQ pathway, which leads to an influx of calcium into the cell, as well as the release of calcium from within the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell. This leads to an overall combined increase in intracellular calcium levels, which causes stronger and more frequent contractions of the muscle fibres within the uterus. Because of this, misoprostol is used in the treatment and prevention of postpartum haemorrhage, as contraction of the uterus will restrict the blood vessels, reducing blood flow and preventing blood loss especially if the bleeding is caused by a lack of uterine tone, retained tissue or coagulopathy. Misoprostol can be used in conjunction with syntometrin, as their mechanism of action is different. However, syntometrin should be first line choice. Misoprostol is also used in the medical management of a miscarriage if surgical intervention is not required. Misoprostol is also used in the termination of pregnancy, where it is usually combined with another pharmacological agent. This is because misoprostol will cause the expulsion of any uterine contents by causing contraction of the myometrium. So now we have an understanding of how misoprostol works, let's move on to look at the pharmacokinetics. Misoprostol can be administered orally as a tablet, sublingually, vaginally and rectally and is absorbed by the GI or urinary tract. Once absorbed, misoprostol is largely bound to plasma proteins and is subject to first-pass metabolism, which will decrease the amount of drug that reaches systemic circulation by approximately 20%. This is referred to as the bioavailability of the drug. Misoprostol is metabolised by various tissues around the body into the active form misoprostol acid, and elimination is via the kidneys in the urine. An oral dose of misoprostol has an 8 minute onset of action and a duration of action of approximately 2 hours. A sublingual dose has an 11 minute onset of action and a duration of approximately 3 hours. A vaginal dose has about a 20 minute onset of action and a duration of approximately 4 hours and a rectal dose has a 100 minute onset of action and a duration of approximately 4 hours. Let's now look at the indications for misoprostol, which we have already discussed. It is essential though that you always act within your scope of practice and check local guidelines. Because of the protective function misoprostol has on the stomach mucosa, 
It is used in the treatment and prevention of gastric and duodenal ulcers and in the prophylaxis and treatment of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory induced ulcers. Due to misoprostol's uterine stimulatory effects, it is used in the treatment and prevention of postpartum haemorrhage as well as the medical management of miscarriage and the termination of pregnancy. Misoprostol is contraindicated in pregnancy. Common side effects of misoprostol include stomach pains, loose stools, nausea and vomiting, which may be because of altered digestion of food, as well as vaginal bleeding and uterine contraction. To recap, misoprostol belongs to a group of medications known as synthetic prostaglandin E1 analogues. And a synthetic prostaglandin E1 analogue is a class of drug which binds to a prostaglandin E1 receptor and mimics the effects that natural prostaglandins would have. Misoprostol is used to protect and promote healing of gastric and duodenal ulcers by inhibiting hydrogen ion secretion within the stomach and promoting the secretion of mucus and bicarbonate. Misoprostol is also used as a potent uterine stimulant which causes contraction of the myometrium and is utilised in the prevention and treatment of postpartum haemorrhage, as well as the termination of pregnancy and the medical management of miscarriage. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to check out our other videos, and if there are any topics you would like us to cover, then please leave a comment in the comment section below.